So that's kind of a sort of beginning point of the common things that I've seen. But let me give you some examples. So, so I'm going to read through rather quickly this particular one because there's going to be a lot of text because I want to quote for you some of the things that we actually read in the article. This is a probe that looked at drinking water and it was an article on how bad our drinking water is. And it, uh, it, it <clears throat> talked about the pharmaceuticals that we can find in them and these are all quotes from it. A vast array of pharmaceuticals including antibiotics, anticonvulsants, mood stabilizers and sex hormones have been found in the drinking water supplies of at least 41 million Americans an Associated Press investigation shows. Officials in Philadelphia said testing there discovered 56 pharmaceuticals or byproducts in treated drinking water, including medicines for pain, infection, high cholesterol, asthma, epilepsy, mental illness, and heart problems. 63 pharmaceuticals or byproducts were found in the city's watersheds. I think I'll have another sip of my Deer Park uh, <laughs> water. Anti-epileptic and anti-anxiety medications were detected in a portion of the treated drinking water for 18.5 million people in Southern California. Researchers at the U.S. Geological Survey analyzed a Passaic Valley Water Commission drinking water treatment plant, which serves 850,000 people in northern New Jersey, and found a metabolized angina medicine and the mood-stabilizing carbamazepine in drinking water. Three medications, including an antibiotic, were found in drinking water supplies to Tucson, Arizona. Sex hormone was detected in San Francisco's drinking water. <laughs> and now for our own area, the drinking water for Washington, D.C. and surrounding areas tested positive for six pharmaceuticals. So there the message is really clear. You should be worried. Your drinking water is contaminated. But let's talk about what wasn't said. And I think this is really important. It's very hard kind of to come up with these questions of what wasn't said, and certainly journalists aren't always doing it. What's the order of magnitude? So they pointed out that the drugs were found in concentrations from parts per billion to parts per trillion, which is sort of like saying that something costs between $1,000 and a $1 million. So we've got just huge ranges that we're talking about um, in a little innocent statement like the concentration raised from parts per billion, ranged from parts per billion to parts per trillion, which sounds like a lot. Um, there's no discussion of what effect these pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals could have in minute quantities. And this is really important. How worried should we be that we see these things in drinking water? Um, you know, there's arsenic in carrots. How many of you knew that, right? But it's not likely to be dangerous for you in the quantities that you normally eat of carrots. And that's a really important thing. It's, it's one of the basic tenets of toxicology, that the dose makes the poison. Um, there's no comparisons, OK? So we've seen pharmaceuticals. What about oil or gasoline or other kinds of contaminants? How does that compare? And you know, it's treated sewage. What else is in there? As kind of, you know, I, I think that's really important to think. There's a lot of things that go in our water if we want to measure minute quantities. Now, this isn't to say that we shouldn't be worried about it. It's to say that the author of the AP Probe article didn't take into consideration really important, a really important task of giving the reader a perspective of what this means. So the message is, get worried. This is terrible. Drugs are bad. And I think, unfortunately, they're not really giving us a sense of how worried we should be, how bad is it. It's kind of a scare article.